thing. Oh. Hello, everyone. Oh, boy. There we go. Welcome to the Lunch Zone. I'm Nathan Humple. I'm a metadata librarian here at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. And I am Kelly Breivik, a PhD student in the English department at UWM. And uh, here off to the side, I'm Thomas Mallaby, professor of anthropology here at UWM. Cool. So what are we playing today? We are playing Devil Daggers, and we'll see how this goes, because this is a very straightforward game, and my total time in this game has been 89 minutes. <laughs> so this will almost double my total time in the game. So, yes. So why did you choose this one? Well, this month I was like... I wanted to see how this game goes in this setting, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought I'd pick a sort of loose theme of minimalism, and this gameplay definitely adheres to that. Mm -hmm. So... I'm not sure how I feel about the hand. <laughs> Already. Because here's the thing with, like, a lot of, uh, it might just be me, but, like, when with first person, like, I feel like I don't see a lot. Like, I feel like I should see my whole arm, not just this. I feel like this guy's got T-Rex arms. <laughs> um, or maybe, like, his right. arm comes right out of his, his like, neck. It's also like, this weird kind of jackhammer animation mm -hmm. for the arm, like, you know. So that's it. Be, what? That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole game. You have to survive as long as you can in this arena and that is it more and it's always the same it's always the same spawn. yeah yeah i could see why your total game time is 89 minutes <laughs> not to throw shade at this so if you don't destroy the large ones they launch more skulls. yes and the skulls that have been launched they just keep bouncing around they pursue you actually mm -hmm. oh, I see. yeah i mean this seems just like a literal nightmare like no rationale or reason. Mm -hmm. It's just you know that you have to survive. Like yeah. you have that instinct even Oops. in your dream. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Oh, we got a well, trippy infinite space question mark. <laughs> no, there is an edge to this. Um, a very hard edge um, that you can fall down. In fact, why not? Ah! <laughs> so you're essentially on a platform. Yes. Are you given, like, a how-to, or is it just that I know how to move and I know how to shoot? Um, it's basically I know how to move, I know how to shoot. Um, there is a... There is a mode... There are two modes of your shooting. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the sort of machine gun thing, and then there's also... Mm -hmm. What is... Sort of more of a shotgun thing, if you tap the button. But it's really, I always find it really hard to implement, because you, you have to tap it. You can't hold it down at all. If you do, then you get a very short burst of the machine gun. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of awkward, because if you, want, if you want to do it, and you fail, you may end up really messing yourself up more than you wanted to. Is it one hit and you're dead? Yes. And score submitted. Is, is there? Are you just basically locked into a kind of global leaderboard on this? Yes. Game? So, um, <clears throat> I don't know. The global um, leader, or I, oh, I hear it. Here it's I putting am. where you are. One hundred forty-six thousand. Right. <laughs> so global is. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> That's wow. how many seconds. God, it's like. It's like worse than going to the arcade because like you're oh, right. dealing with like the best of the best and not just the best in your town. Right, right. And that was twenty four seconds. And my best time is fifty three <laughs> seconds. Um, also Robomofo is asking, do the enemies change based on how long you survive? Yes. Um, we haven't gotten to different enemy types, but there are different enemy types that come in. Um yeah. So, so it's not always these these dudes in particular. Yeah, they they always spawn. Oh. Uh -huh. Um, but there's different types of them. 
and are there any pauses for kind of cleanup of skulls? No. Ever? no. <laughs> Is it possible to kill the guys? Oh, there's what a What is that? No. It's like some clue level bullshit. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to kill the skulls before they even launch any skulls, or they just do it immediately? Um, I think they just do it immediately. New high score! Yay. So this is the easy stage. It is! It's the only stage. Yeah, well, it is the easy stage. I mean, that, this part is... Fairly... Have you tried shotgunning as you're walking before the skulls are launched? Um, what do you mean? Like, because it seems like the shotgun has more range, and it might, I feel like it might be possible. Mm, to to get just get the skulls right out of the way? Yeah. But, like, before... They scatter pretty quickly, though. Oh, that... no, I mean, like, shouldn't the thing before it's able to launch a significant amount oh, of skulls? Oh, um, I can try it, but you have to hit the... First of all, I had to find it because I'm always right, kind of disoriented. Right, enough to it to do it. Yeah. Okay. And you have to, this one you have no, to hit the red thing. What. Oh, just like on that other one, you had to hit that thing that was flashing. That yeah. One. The skulls you can take out pretty quickly. So this game is relying a lot on just inherent game knowledge. Like, I don't yeah. think that this is expecting, this is... Like, so this makes me think of, if you had to introduce someone to video games, what would that game be? It would not be this one, but... No, I, well, it depends on what you want to introduce. I mean, it, this one also has a very simplistic concept. Right. If you wanted to say, well, here, this is very much an arcade game, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's even simpler than something like Pac-Man, just right. because, um... You only have the one level, uh, but right. the concept is still as simple as Pac-Man. Just don't die, essentially. Yeah. Well, um, and Space Invaders, and yeah. you know, so many. The yeah. asteroids and all the asteroids. Galaga. But I, I take you to be saying, Kelly, that, you know, okay. there's, you come curious. to this game, you know, very likely with, you know, mouse, keyboard, point-and-click, first-person mm -hmm. shooter experience, right? Right. You know, I think of something like Doom as really, mm -hmm. and Castle Wolfenstein as kind of the, some of the first versions of that, right? Yeah. For PC, where that's the interface, and, and that's the, just, what you're supposed to do is this kind of endless sort of taking on of enemies, right? Mm -hmm. I guess there's yeah. a little bit of a story in Doom, but, um, but it's like, it's, it's taking the arcade idea of this endless gameplay mm -hmm. and um, sort of combining that with the FPS yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. vernacular, you might say, right? And sure, it's not the first game to do that, but... Yeah, well, and I, I mean, it's it really just boils it down to its essence here. Um, I'm trying to hold off on the obvious point for pontification, but... No, I, no, I go ahead. It, I know it's coming. I'm going to just get it over with. Right? But like, to me, these the whole tradition of this kind of gaming is there's an interesting kind of, um, or maybe it's not so interesting, but <laughs> kind of a, uh, you know, this this endless mastery. Like you're just, mm -hmm. it, it's like consumerism, right? You're yeah. just you're just existing to master the system, mm -hmm. yeah. right? There is there's no ethics, there's no there's no social relationships, there's there's only There's your no your practiced and demonstrated mastery over a complex and contingent environment. To me, that's like the essence of post-war techno mm -hmm. kind of liberal thinking, right? I do have one comment on that, because I do agree for the most part, but would you say that the leaderboard is a sort of social interaction? Yes, and then the perfect text for this is Carly Kukurik's, mm -hmm. right? Coin-operated Americans, right? Where... Can That's you, uh, so coin operated Americans. Coin operated, um, I think it's coin operated Americans. Carly Kokura, K O C U R E K. Uh, it's a it's a great book. K O C. K O C U R E K. And in it, she uh, looks at yeah, coin operated Americans looks at the the birth of sort of arcades and leaderboards, uh, mm -hmm. focusing on Iowa, which is kind of the 
primary sites for a lot of site for a lot of this, especially one arcade in particular, mm -hmm. and how it was, you know, a, a kind of new post-war masculinity mm -hmm. that is about technology and mastery of high technology, not yeah. about kind of gross motor, agricultural or industrial mm -hmm. skills, but instead this kind of like ham radio operators and you know people yeah. who build their own TVs like my dad or whatever you know that that that's the kind of masculinity we're yeah. getting training in uh, in the if these machines in the 70s and you know that's interesting because I think that's kind of gone away on, on a certain level um, with the that hobbyist kind of narrative has kind of gone away um, now when computers are so ubiquitous and um, creating with them is is relatively easy, you know. Um, you don't have as many people pulling out the guts of them as you used to. Well, I, th I think that's because creating with them is hard, actually, right? Because access to, to whatever the platform is, your phone mm -hmm. especially, but also consoles and to a certain extent even still PCs, yeah. you know, access to tinker under the hood is harder now than yeah. it was. That's I mean, true. the post-war right. period is like all these guys coming back. This is the typical story, and I think there's something to it. You know, all these service people coming back from World War II, and they've gained all these skills. Yeah. So they're hot-rodding, and they're chopping up motorcycles, and they're, you know, building ham radios, yada, 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 mm -hmm. right? But we don't get to tinker, you know. Yeah, that's true. Those are that's actively true. made so that you can play. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because um, one thing that I notice a lot is like millennials, people who were born in like, or even pre millennials, but anyone born in like this, I feel like the 70s to the late 90s, have a certain computer literacy and technology literacy that people in post 2000 don't mm -hmm, have just right. because of how buggy a lot of the computers yeah. operated and we had to fix it because the internet did not have the sort of information. Right. My ability to tinker with computers is very much tied to games and <laughs> ability to actually get a PC game running a lot of the time, which mm -hmm. is not, which I think is not the same as it used to be. I don't have to make boot discs. Yeah. I don't have to, you know, got make it. sure that I've got the right kind of Drivers. expanded memory. Right? <laughs> it just works, and that's awesome. Um, but you lose a lot of that because... You lose a lot of that um, curiosity, I think, yeah. because of that. Uh, but I, I don't know. I mean, there's a drive for that curiosity, too. And I think, mm -hmm. hopefully, and because there, of that, yeah. you know, people will have a different... Will, will find that creativity and the curiosity in different ways. I think it, be, it was a necessity at first, and now it's just the people who care to want to learn that specific yeah. thing. I'm not saying shame on people who don't know how to install stuff on their computer. Right. Just now it's not a part of what we know. Right. But it does. The, the only problem with that, I think, is that it does um, kind of give up control of, of these devices that we rely on to corporations mm -hmm. and their what they consider the ease of access, you know. If you don't have as much ability to play under the hood because they don't want to have you screw it up or and don't want to troubleshoot that, then all of the control over it goes back to um, corporations that design these things hermetically sealed. We have this strange situation where, you know, this period of time in which... A you know, more and more of the actual high stakes content of our lives became digital at the same time in which we were sustaining this great skepticism of public institutions, right? Mm -hmm. So we we almost, for a while there, felt like we were, boy, aren't we more comfortable having a company have our information than the government of all things, <laughs> right? Like, now maybe that's kind of going away a little bit and a bit of a, a reaction against that, but that was a weird coincidence, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it left us with this massive private control of not only our information but architectures through which we engage in social action digitally. You mm -hmm. know? Uh, so, 
Yeah. Uh, so, Robo Mopo says, uh, Thomas, to your question a bit, uh, and reflected on my blog post for last week, I'm thinking about how this game complicates the idea of beating slash finishing a game. Um, it seems that the main obstacle of this game is not the enemies, but beating other people's and your own scores, so the gamification of self-improvement, and he hates the word gamification, by the way. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, yeah, right. But, but absolutely, yeah. You know, it's, uh, there's no, there's no content other than to develop and display mastery. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, technical mastery, mastery of a complex system. And I don't know how much of this is procedurally generated, so to speak, um, because at a certain, I don't know if the game ends. I don't think it does. You know, at this point, people have the highest score is, you know, 18 minutes and something, um, and and it gets down to milliseconds in terms of the highest score at this point. Right. Um, <laughs> but I don't know how much content was put in there, or if at that point it's really just a matter of dodging as much as you can, you know? Yeah. So, Yeah, it feels like a perfectly timed shotgun blast could take out that, yeah. that volley, you know? There in the oh my gosh. Do to say the sound design in this is really good. I love this. So there's some article saying a few people have actually beaten Devil Daggers and they hmm. only need to survive 500 seconds, but then it doesn't say what happens at the end, which just makes me think it's just a clickbaity. Right. 500 um, seconds. Um, That's yeah. a lot less than some yeah. of the leaderboards. So. Yeah. It has, so it's just the one and only objective is to survive as long as possible. As far as we know, there is no end to the game, only time between deaths. That isn't to say it's entirely without milestones. It has a single achievement challenging players to endure oh. its ceaseless assault to a mere 500 seconds. So I guess beating the game is just whatever, like, paratextual element somewhere. Oh, there's a, there's an achievement. Yeah, that's true. Well, isn't that interesting, right? That there's these two... <laughs> So Pierre Bourdieu has this contrast between competence and credentials, right? Mm. Institutions authorize credentials. They confer credentials, and credentials are like a proxy for competence, right? Mm. But they're not the same thing as competence, right? right? Uh, a level, you know, an endgame World of Warcraft player with an eye level score of blah, 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 because their gear is really, really good, that's a set of credentials. It's, it suggests, it, it points to competence, right? Mm -hmm. But it isn't that. Well, here, you've got this company providing an achievement, a badge, a credential, right? Which is an index of some amount of competence, but it's not the same thing as, hey, all of these, uh, it's not the same thing as people competing against each other. Right. Where the fine distinctions of competence go down to like the thousandth of a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Robomoko says, so the system is unmasterable, right? It doesn't end. Right. It's only a matter of doing incrementally better than the last time. Just, just like capitalism. Yeah. I, and I don't, you know, I don't want to criticize that because this game, it, it is what it is. You know, it doesn't really make any um, bones <laughs> about... <laughs> <laughs> uh, about... Um, Whoa. About what it is or what it does. There's a. I'm not sure what this says about me and capitalism, but I was done with this game like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is, is this a multiplayer? No. Okay, okay. Oops. Kind of like quick. I, I mean, obviously, I'm coming in late. Yeah. I'll be coming in late every I mean, I guess day. I'm just mad that the only <laughs> dagger is what you walk into to start the game. Otherwise, you're just shooting, like, rando lava shit. Well, well, I think there's supposed to be daggers, but you don't really see them. Shooting? Yeah. Out of but your they're finger. devil daggers. Yes. You know, you might enjoy it more if you played it. No. <laughs> No, I'm actually having to watch it on that screen because that's giving me motion sickness. Yeah. This isn't. No, it's not. It's well, that TV. That's is... good for the arena. Well, I know, tonight. but I keep wanting to look at that because that's more interesting. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. <laughs> it's different. I hear no, it is different. All right, but uh, so I'm just gonna be a little provocative and jump okay. back to something. 
Uh-huh. You said Nathan, right? You said okay. you don't hold it against him. They're not trying to be anything else than, Oops. than you know this kind of game. Mm-hmm. And I guess I, you know, I would mostly side with that argument. But to, to be devil's advocate, right? Isn't there something to the argument that hey, nobody nobody gets to design a game, you know, pretending that there are no greater consequences or ethical context in mm-hmm. which they produce a game. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I know that runs in the limits of, like, well, can't we just have fun sometimes? <laughs> you know, sort of thing. But at the well, same I, time. I think it pushes and pulls a, a, against what is a game. Um, you know, when when I play a game, sometimes, I, and, I, and I enjoy this game, when I play a game, I'm looking for some sort of narrative on some level. I'm looking for some sort of emotional engagement with the game. Um, but... Other people are not. They're looking for something more visceral. They're looking for mastery. And and I think there's place for both of it. Um, and that's... Games are somewhat unique... Well, I don't want to say they're unique in that, art, in that, in that way. Because there are... There's... There are... Yeah, comics and, and movies. You know... I'm not always in the mood for a Fellini movie. You know, sometimes I want to watch a Marvel movie. Um, or even, like, Commando, you know. So there's more visceral reactions. And it would be unfortunate if... And I don't think this is what you're sort of pontificating about, admittedly. But it would be unfortunate if we didn't have those other pieces um, in the medium that boiled things down to a more visceral response. Uh, you know, and, and like I said before, I, you know, I don't really disagree with that point of view, but although I do want to call attention to the fact that that contrast of more visceral versus less sounds a lot like it's kind of making the visceral seem kind of natural mm. and a cultural, mm-hmm. right? As if it's uh, primal, yes. right? As if there's nothing culturally loaded about it it's just it's just down in our gut and it's appealing to that part of us yeah no that's that is a good point i i think um you have to recognize that there's something that it says about society or you when you want to watch commando rather than um well schindler's list or something right yeah um you know it it it's not that you just want a dumb movie what's defined as dumb has its own um, characteristics that are not natural right and well another way to put it is well any any cultural product that we take in we consume play whatever it is it you know there might it might make sense to think of a spectrum is it confirming your expectations or challenging them mm. you know and mm-hmm. toward the end of simply confirming your expectations then maybe there's some room for some cultural criticism mm-hmm. of that but but at the same time you know I like a I like a mindless shooter as much as anything. right what was um, that that text we had to read for Tammy's class where they put it in different categories or ones that actively change ones that play into ones oh that's that a great different. question but I can uh, not know it off the top of my head god it's a film thing one second Ryan help us out you were there yeah there's like a film theorist who like details that like um, some works like act like are both are like is it, it was a communist I not communist it was a, a Marxist a Marxist theorist of a man a oh, man the gist of it was that like some things are actively like um, challenging your like your notions of capitalism and, like and it's like it's like a binary thing or like it's like one one like you can you can tell that it's challenging it um, visibly and it is challenging it. Mm-hmm. There's ones that like you can tell are like masquerading as challenging it but aren't challenging it. Right. There's ones that you can't tell that they're challenging it but so like they're subversive. Mm-hmm. And then there's ones with the zero zero. They're conforming to capitalism and right. both in both their visual presentation and their subtext. Right. And right. so maybe this would be you know that zero one right where it's not actively commenting on anything but it's subversively maybe we can 
wean something from the text. Yeah. But it's not useful in the audience. Can't yeah. Look up the theorist. I know. <laughs> I'm eating a sandwich, okay? <laughs> Give me Whatever. Let me look at you too well. I've been teaching for three hours. <laughs> Whoa! Nice. Yeah, and we've talked about the kind of uh, the architecture of the game, the kind of endless, you know, individualized uh, mastery of a complex consumer environment. There's also the kind of more explicit semiotics of it, right? It's a bunch of flaming, you know, devil skull type things launching skulls mm -hmm. at you, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that as a criticism. It's no, I, also, it, it should be on the table. Yeah, I mean, this has a very specific aesthetic, right? Yeah. Um, you know that in theory, this game could be done with just random shapes. It doesn't matter what they are, you know. Yeah. But there's a, it has a certain was it feel um, about it, it was and. Late in the after Krakauer. Because of what you're shooting. You know? yeah. And, it, you know, I think I was trying to think of some other examples of games that have a kind of uh, no, minimalism to them, but maybe which oh, yeah, don't yeah. lead me to feel concerned about some of these issues. And, and Nidhogg is actually one of them. Okay. Right? Because, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. you and somebody else are, like, stabbing each other, mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of kind of gore in it all, but there's this kind of prancing quality also to the animation you know yeah there's a, there's, it's it's a little complicated in, yeah in its mixture of signals that it's in indices that it's giving you yeah which is kind of nice whereas this one is just sort of it has a very consistent aesthetic yeah i mean if we're talking about cultural heritage can you jump no this is like really reminiscent of like doom and quake yeah and right we were saying that action. yeah yeah, absolutely. It's the first first game I thought of when I saw it. Because, like, I mean, in Doom, you can't jump either. I know you can't jump in Doom, right? Nope. No, you can't? Okay, good. No. Nope. You can't look up or down. Um, yeah. Doom is very, um, you know, you don't have a reload button or anything like that. It, in comparison to anything now, it is very uncomplicated. But it's also... It takes a lot of different skills to really master it. Um, and this is fairly, I mean, it's really uh, complicated as well. You're basically on a, um, although it looks somewhat 3D, it's really more 2D, right? Um, I mean, the, the graphics that? are 3D, but you're only moving on one plane, right? Mm. Oh, you can't move. You're aiming, though. You can't move yeah, back, you're, you can't move around, like backwards, forwards, you know, and like that. No, no, no. I meant one plane, oh, uh, like as in one two-dimensional. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes, you can look up and down, so it is 3D in that respect. But um, you know, you could have a functional version of this game from a top-down perspective as well. Really. Um, I have to admit, it's kind of engaging. I mean, that whole way in which you know there are things behind you. Yeah, it... You know, it has a little bit of that horror quality in, from just that experience. Yeah, there's things always chasing you. And, right. And it, it, it's... The, strat the, the strategy here is attempting to figure out when to turn around, when to just keep running, you know, um, and kind of juggling those different movement techniques that you have. That reminds me of the Binding of Isaac. Yeah, I think there's that element too. Have we ever played that? I don't know if we. I think we had a long time ago. Um, but yeah, there's. Except this isn't procedurally generated like the Binding. Oh, it isn't. No, it's it not. seems like it is. Kind of was masquerading as that kind of game. Yeah, I think. I don't think it is. I think the enemy placements are fairly rote. Um, but I, I could be wrong on that. Is there bounds to the level, or does it just yes. keep going? Out? No, there's bounds. There, it's the platform. Yeah, you can fall off the edge. Okay. It's a shame you can't. You know, even if it were nice and kind of difficult and a challenge, that you can't lure the skulls off the edge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. You could play that. You know, play chicken with them. Essentially. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
So, th so there's there's levels then. It's like this is like a course, and like when you beat this, you unlock a new course. No, it's no. all on this one. It's yeah. Just, just. I mean, like, like if you beat, can you beat this? No. no. Okay, so this <laughs> keeps going. Just, yeah. Okay, um, okay. So, and that's what I was wondering before, because I don't know if at a certain point the enemies just more quickly respawn, or, or you know, it, does the difficulty kind of ramp up? Yeah, like where where does the design end, um, and then it just sort of like iterates. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't gotten that far. I haven't survived over a minute in this game. Oops. You want to try? Sure. All right. Excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. So I just click retry. Ooh, this is kind of caught up right now. Ah, I guess I can't do anything about it. Let's see. Ooh, this is... All right. I just will accept that this is very sensitive for the way that I typically play games. There is a shotgun uh, yeah, fire, if you, if which you is tap just it. tapping it. Ooh. Which could be useful for clearing out a bunch of those dudes. Yeah. I always have a really hard time switching Ooh. between it. Where are you? Oh, there's one. Does this thing keep vomiting up stuff? You gotta shoot mm -hmm. the red gem. There you go. You fell off. <laughs> <laughs> I fell off. <laughs> uh. Um... RoboMofo had a couple other things. Uh, it's a shooter with no guns. That seems somewhat political. And I think it matters that it isn't people. Um, I think those are good points. Um, skulls were people once. Were they? <laughs> I mean, they I are... Um, yeah, it's, it's... I think it's... Ooh, I almost fell off. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna go to mouse settings quick. I, you may be able to change it in the game. Oh, you're right. That's probably a better idea. Um, right. uh, hit escape. And go to options. Input. Look speed. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll drop it down to like here. I'm gonna grab my mouse pad. I get pretty particular when I play shooters. All right. <laughs> Maybe you'll survive longer than me. I don't. I don't know if I will, but I just. I just. You know. I like to. I guess maybe that's something we could talk about sometimes. All right. <laughs> what the heck? Just Walk in. Oh, okay. Head. All right. Let's see. All right. Good. I can turn around still. Ugh. Oh. Like oh, with that oh, it's shorter the distance. Yeah. The shotgun has to be the right distance away. Definitely can take out a few though when you get mm -hmm. it the right. I'm curious because they have the ten minute run from the guy with the top, like the top mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Wait, the top run is only ten minutes long? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty wild. Uh, that was a while ago. I think it. Was, I think it's eighteen minutes long. We could watch it. Wow. Because I think it might be worth seeing, like what techniques. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. After you oh. die. Oh, yeah, they're behind <laughs> you, right? <laughs> At a certain point. So you just can't um, help but think they go are to over your shoulder. Okay. And then at the top one, click on the eye icon next. To oh. You could watch it just. Yeah. Oh, how about downloading that? Okay. built into the game? Well, well, that says a lot about. Else about how the architectural oh, right. commitments to the kind of competitive yep. mastery is going I think, on. yep, enhanced player precision is on. Okay. Is this the run? Uh, That's how you win. Oh, all right, there we go. Okay, so he killed them with the without the shotgun. He just, mm -hmm. he just spam shot them, okay. And he stands still at times, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Maybe that's gotta redo, do yeah. with how they spawn. And also to tempt them toward a particular spot. Hmm. Maybe yeah, they, they only move, spawn they when you move. In. Oh, maybe. And he keeps them around. Yeah. And grouped up. I should say they. they maybe it's because around. there's only a certain number of enemies can be spawned at once, and those are like non-threatening enemies for that. Whoa. 
Is that like a power up of some sort? And I think it is. It's always interesting when you see somebody who's really skilled. Sometimes their their actions will seem nonsensical. Like he like sprays in like yeah. certain patterns that don't seem to make sense from a mm -hmm. longer distance. But he, yeah, he's just doing a little damage to them, but he's not trying to. He finds like a hole in the skulls and just runs through it. Uh huh. He wants them grouped up. I think is part of it, so that he has mostly the perimeter to himself. It looks like to me. Yeah, it looks like he's he's kind of moving them towards the center. So that's yeah. why you don't get them coming from behind. Oh. They're still spawning though. Yeah. Which is crazy. Wow, look at all those. It's almost scary how many there are, like how it kind of keeps that thing in mind. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly. Oh yeah. Definitely. Oh, there was a third kind. Yeah, you see the a worm like kind of thing. thing. Yeah, it's wow. funny. Wow. You see, like how amateurish you <laughs> are at approaching these things. You know, looking at people that are doing it this long. There's the power up again. Yeah. Somehow. I wonder if you're invulnerable when you that going on. Maybe. It looks like he's shooting more now. Yeah. Like he's shooting littler bullets. Yeah, he's sucking up the gems. Mm-hmm. Kind of fall. Do when the big guys, when they die, did they like drop lava on the ground? Like is that how you were dying sometimes? I don't think so. I think I, I think mostly got spore got swarmed by the skulls. Uh, there's the shotgun. Hey, he finally used it. Ooh, that thing was spooky. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Gotta be just that fearless. Is impressive. Ugh. Now he seems to be taking him down. Yeah. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a MOBA game. In the sense where, like, all right, so let's say you're playing, like, mid lane in Dota or League of Legends. Uh-huh. And, like, a good mid lane player knows that they can go under the opponent's tower to kill the opponent and when to go in and risk it all right. to get uh -huh. that kill. Because, like, that's how you get ahead. And that's like, seems to be what this player is doing at times, right? Just taking, like, a what seems to us to be, like, an insane risk, but he understands it. He understands he can just run through the skulls, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, look how he's clearing them out now. Okay, so then the the other one spawn. Right. Again on the periphery now. Uh huh. That right slows up. it down. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> That's pretty wild. He knew where they were gonna be appearing. Yeah. That was a big part of what he's doing while powered up. Yeah, look how much damage you can do. Power it up this way, and mm -hmm. it keeps increasing. It doesn't look like it's going away. Oh my gosh! So he follows that one all the way down to get all the gems. The wow! Without a single error, does this one? Well, it's like a yeah. This really quickly becomes like a bullet hell shooter. Oh yeah. It's like radius. Oh, that. there's a. I know that's a new one too. I wonder if you like miss one of those, does the centipede survive? It looks yeah, like it Yeah, I think does. so. Yep, because that one I see there was just one gem on that one. Robo Mofo suggests maybe he's trying to get the frame rate to drop. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be though. If you want to do that, just have a crummy computer yeah. and run it with your bad graphics card. <laughs> but I do think the key is the more gems you pick up, the more powerful your attacks are. Yeah. And at a certain point, your shotgun becomes really worth it to use. So these are like the originals, but they have like four gems on them. Yeah, it looks like... They're like I'm not sure if they <clears> spawn <throat> more. Is that the five, the, you know, what was five, that, five hundred, minute, five hundred seconds? Minutes? Yeah, five hundred seconds mark. Maybe. Yeah, so now he's waiting for them to come in. Because those don't seem to re 
don't seem to spawn <coughs> the skulls that often. Maybe when you when you move. No. Yeah, you're right. What is Whoa. that? Whoa. <laughs> I, right. I'm sure, you know, that that's what happens all the time in these games, is you're so used to, you know, you you get this sort of rope movement on cool. what you're... I thought it was dead, dead yeah, thing. thank you. Whoa. Ooh, what is that? I don't know. I wonder if you don't kill that in time, if it, like, respawns. But you get this sort of road movement and then something new comes up and you don't know how to deal with it, right? So I'm, you know, you wonder how many times this person died to get to this point, right? Right. I like when like the enemies are like a different color, like that mm -hmm. green like really stands out mm -hmm. from, from the rest of the game. <coughs> yeah, now he uses the shotgun to clear the skulls, which he mm -hmm. didn't do initially. I wonder if it has longer range too. Oh now? Like than it did before. Yeah. I could see it. Is anyone going to want to go back to watching me play this after this? <laughs> wow, there's actually a lot of different kinds of enemies. Because that's a different centipede. Yeah. yeah. I keep thinking about what Kelly said about it being a literal nightmare. I mean, it really is that kind of yeah. vision. Must be really satisfying to kill the one of the centipedes. It it's seems like, like it reminds me of uh, in Galaga where you have the bonus uh, things and if you hit all of them, you get extra ten thousand points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I feel like, like watching like him, like it seems like it was almost more front loaded difficult. Like I'm not saying that it isn't difficult now. I'm sure like there's just a lot of esoteric knowledge that he mm -hmm. that he has. That makes this easier because, like, mm -hmm. look at he's killing his skulls so fast. Mm -hmm. But it does seem like now he's not like having to run around. Like, right. He just focuses on one enemy at a time. The positioning is less challenging when his weapon mm -hmm. is so powerful. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of like going back to Binding of Isaac. Like in that game, like when you get some sort of super powerful item combo or something, it becomes really easy to just like blow through like previously extremely difficult challenges. Mm -hmm. Like, oftentimes what kills runs is something in the early part of the game. It's yeah. Like really... Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah, that. He just cleared out all those skulls in one shot. I was, like, shooting the ground, so, yeah. like, there's, there's some sort of splash damage that happens. Looks like it. Hmm. How did he not die to that? I don't know. Yeah. That, like, flew through It's like him. he jumped over it or something, <laughs> but we know he can't. We should stop saying he. Who knows what this player is when they jumped over Yeah. Um, oh my. But yeah, that's a that's a good point about Isaac. I think we should revisit that at some point, um, because you do have to change your um, your strategy. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of luck that comes in with those types of roguelikes. Um, if you don't get the right item at the early onset of the game, the game becomes extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. um, but if you do get the right item, then you can actually keep going and um, make some progress in it. Which is sometimes kind of frustrating. Yeah. I think, for me, like, <coughs> as somebody who has, like, over 200 hours in Binding of Isaac, I've played that game a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, you get, but it's interesting, like, when you, the more skills you get, in that game at least, like, yes, there's, like, the random chance things that happen, mm -hmm. but it seems to me that, like, the better I got, the less that those things mattered for the strength of my run. Yes, like, they helped, mm -hmm. but, like, I was able to complete runs with what would have been, like, an objectively bad set of items mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. 
Yeah, and I think that's where the skill really comes in, and, and Isaac is being adaptable to the different items that you get. And it's also why I'm not very good at that game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if there's some sound elements that on the headphones or something, you know if there's a skull bouncing behind you. Because there's been times that the player here has turned around and it's led me to think that they know. Yeah, I do think that the the sound is a big tip off, and if you have headphones on it, the directionality of it is is really important. Yeah, it's not gotten a weapon upgrade in a while. Yeah, I think he might. I think this might be the big. Might be as high as. Well. Some of these enemies, I like. I'm unsure. Like this centipede in the air. Like, how is that threatening the player? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not sure what those things do either. Do they all just summon skulls? No, it's really only the tentacle things that summon the skulls. Maybe if you bump into the spike-like thing. Yeah, that you die, yeah. that might be it. I mean, that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Is like an interesting take on, I guess, because I guess it's because like it's like an arcade game, I guess, mm -hmm. like more than anything else. Like I think like 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 because like I've been doing a lot of research into speedrunning recently because mm -hmm. like I'm thinking of we're gonna speedrun a game for the arena in a month, um, and so I think that um, like it's interesting how like there's like this switch when the consoles came out where like you know before Super Mario Bros like the uh, the visual like indicator of skill was the high score, right? Mm -hmm. And like, and after consoles and home gaming became more popular, it becomes less about like some high score or making it further, and more about how fast you can do it, right? The mm -hmm. speed run, like it's kind of like that classic switch of what the single player experience or the marker of skill in the single player experience. Mm -hmm. is. Yes. Well, before you got here, Eric, we were talking about that. We we're talking about Carly Kukurik's book. Uh, point operated Americans about the arcades and the high score, the posting of it. People would phone in to that uh, arcade in Iowa from all around the country with their high scores, and they posted up on the board and that as the, the the yardstick, the metric for competency, right? And then I think you're right to say that speed runs is sort of a, a different way to create a metric um, that is supposed to index skill. Yeah. Um. Uh, Kayfade came in and pointed out that um, someone made a 2D version entirely from scratch of Devil Daggers hmm. um, called 2DDD. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to to see the difference in, in that. The way that this player takes out those caterpillar things just, it's very satisfying to watch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much longer we have. I wonder what takes him out. Of yeah, right. It, it's probably a skull. Just something really. <laughs> well, it does seem. We like all we know what it will be. Carefully through those We've fights. been playing yeah. enough. Or they did. Yeah, it does seem like it's maxed out. I hate you know, never say never, but we haven't seen a well, new enemy. Right. Quite a long time. Now. So it, you know, I think in this case, it's just a matter of the amount of enemies that are coming on screen. Um, it's also just like Dr. Mario, there's 20 levels, but once you beat level 20, you just keep playing and playing 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, right. so mm -hmm. at the level 20 difficulty, mm -hmm. how many can you get Yeah. Yeah. I find that there's something really disarming, interestingly enough, about this style of game, like with the roguelike style or the Dr. Mario Tetris style, that's like more accessible because it's like just knowing that you will fail and you're just trying to like last as long as you can, like with Tetris or something. 
like, I, I don't know about you guys, but for me as a player, that often, like, eases the flow of failure, right? And yeah. Like, yeah, it's... Yeah, that's true, I, I think. And what's nice about that, I mean, the, what's kind of discouraging about this is that the leaderboards are so far at this point, you know, and it didn't take that long for the leaderboards to get really out of reach for the average player, right? I mean, there's just people that can go into a game and master it, um, you know, within a couple weeks or something. Um, and then they're competing against the top level people on a global leaderboard, but you can still compete against yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And I think there's always going to be some, um, what is even going on anymore? There's, <laughs> there's I can always, see why he would die at this right. point. <laughs> there, there's always going to be some, um, motivation to compete against yourself in, in these games. Mm-hmm. Interesting also is as, as collective skill and knowledge gets higher, how these games can like change. As to, like, uh, like obviously I've been reflecting on World of Warcraft because the WoW Classic came out in the mm -hmm. last week, and like that's like an example where some of like the early bosses that were difficult, um, like when for new players when World of Warcraft came out, now can be cleared by a raid, you know, really easily because they have all this collective knowledge built up, and it becomes. And, like, the challenge becomes, like, different than it used to be. Like, mm -hmm. um, and that seems to be the case here, where, like, if you're, if you're, like, the world record holder, like, now you kind of have to, like, wait for someone else to discover some sort of new tech before... Yeah. Well, it's always tempting, or it's always uh, easy, too, under those circumstances. Game's a good example of it, to imagine, you know, like you were saying before, there are players who can pick up a game and master it in no time. Well that comes from a whole background and a whole set of structures around them mm -hmm. that support that. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got the time, they've got the equipment, they've got the T1 line or whatever it is, they have right. the hours of the hours and hours from that time, they've got all the experience in similar games, you know. Right. And there can often be, in my experience, a really stark difference between wow. the players who are good on day one and the players who exhibit mastery over a longer period of time. Like in the speedrunning community, that can be per particularly profound. Like there's players who will like, like start speedrunning a game like right away and they'll hold the world record for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But then when those players who maybe are a little slower to get to the world record, but who are really good at optimizing, right? Like it's mm -hmm. like a different skill to be good at something. Wow. There he goes. <laughs> Was that, what's the name there? Binter? Binter. 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 All right. Well, I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to make it. Try to beat that. Yeah, I'll try to beat Binter. <laughs> yeah, well, now that you've seen it. Yeah. yeah now right? that I've I seen mean, it. we are mimetic creatures, right? I know so that I have to stand down. still. Don't move. They're not going to hit me if I don't move. Yeah, you're actually making it more complex by moving, perhaps. <laughs> Now I moved, so... Now, yes. are the skulls slowly coming to the center? There, that one is. Oh. Okay, okay, I got him. Ah! <laughs> the big dudes, yeah. Standing still is scary. It's very when he goes to the outside. Yeah. I don't want to kill those things, I guess. But you do want to pick up oh. gems. Yes. Oh, okay. I, I, didn't, uh, I, think, I don't think I knew about gems until now. Um, stand, I will say, I believe, standing still, the gems start to come to you. Um, which is a strategy that has its pros and cons, of course, because you'll get the gems, but then you have to be, um, pretty vulnerable. <laughs> that was like a drive-by. <laughs> Not as easy as we thought. <laughs> Yeah, because one could be spawning behind you. You wouldn't necessarily hear it. There was like a little flash. Oh, yeah. Now there's two? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I got to kill these all really fast because then the other one... Like, you want to like kind of like kill them before the other one spawns in, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that a third one, maybe? You know, the other thing about kind of moving towards the edge, I think, is that... 
Oops. Oh, I hit the R button. Okay, that's cool. There's like a reset button. Um, I hate, hate to hit that in a 20 minute run. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> the other thing I think is when you move towards the edge, you can kind of tell. I'm just gonna kill him. Where the um, where the skulls are. He amassed quite a following of skulls, but he. I keep saying he. But they, yeah. they um, knew exactly where they were. Um, and I think that's a big strategy as well. Alright, there should be skulls following me right now. No? Okay. Yeah, but you got your little... So if we're talking about survival time, like, even just the act of standing still now has given us more time to survive. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's true. Um, it, it's funny, because it doesn't... It seems counterintuitive, but I think... That one I lasted longer well, than I had. You actually introduce more contingency to the circumstances mm -hmm. when you start moving. More things that you have to account for. Mm -hmm. there, are, yeah. there is a sound effect when these guys spawn. Yeah. Kind of sound. It's like he's sort of burping up all the mm -hmm. so. I wonder if killing them makes the next one spawn faster. That it might, that might be true, or it might not. I don't know. <laughs> wow, I can't, I can't hit that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the ones that have that sort of they float a little more. The ones with the horns and mm -hmm. almost seems like. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Spider guy. I don't know. The sounds are really important. They're really. Oh, they they shoot stuff. Oh, the then he shuts down for a second. And Oh, uh, I need a can't can't get tunnel vision. Yep. I had like the exact same score that time. It was fifty nine and fifty nine, I think. <laughs> Target fixation happens to everybody. You have to like pre aim this guy for a little bit. Big skulls to die, okay. No. Oh. Maybe the perimeter now can be a strategy for you. They're all starting to gather, I don't know. This is a lot of skulls. Mm -hmm. I feel like the fact that I didn't take them out made it harder. <laughs> yeah. in the skulls. And when you Wait, flick, where is it? Where maybe is it? the shotgun, if you're the right distance away, then you don't have to be quite as accurate. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's part of it, too. There's a pretty big spread. I felt like it was a lot worse for me. I understand that the better player would knew how to take advantage, but when I wasn't killing these, like... Yeah. Nice. That was good. Oh, oh, oh. oh that was close. Oh, New high score! That's right. For me. <laughs> no, I did, I, I did it, guys. I'm just thinking that you know we're gonna we're gonna see some news you know, posted in our Slack next week. <laughs> Eric has beaten Venter. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think so. All right, um, got two minutes left. Two, two more tries. Two more tries to beat my <laughs> high score. Okay. Ooh. But you know, to get back to one of the themes we started with, you know, there's such a self-contained. Um, you know, person against system mm -hmm. quality to this game that that is a a big component of it's how engaging it is, compelling, right? Why like, are you flying so high? Much stuff? like the video poker machines that Natasha Del Schul talks about, right? It, it you keep coming back, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very easy. I mean, this is a this was a, a very easy game to play late at night. 
um, when I didn't want to go to bed, right? It's, it really encourages you to try and try and try and try. Um, Is it fair to say maybe that in uh, computer games or all games, the more isolated we are, the the easier it is for game design to sort of capture our attention. I'm it. not sure what you mean by that. Well, because there's the social elements are so on the periphery of this game. Mm. You don't have to think about them mm -hmm. while you're trying to master it, right? It's only in the pause, you know, between tries, right? And otherwise you're just diving in, you know, under the hood, you know, or diving into your little area of mastery. Mm. And I, there's something similar, I guess, I keep thinking about Natasha's addiction by design while we're playing this game. The, the way in which that Thanks. sort of full attention, you know, is sort of grabbed and held within something that feels very set apart from the other relationships you may have. Mm. Yeah, um, there's got to be something about um, the game design in there as well, I think. Um, there's, <laughs> there's an isolation in the simplicity of this mission. I um, play with one hand. It seems, I think part of it is, it seems that you can master it. Right. Um, if you try again and just Which go left when you went right, your run will be longer. Right. Right. Um, and so there's this false sense of, of, um, a false sense of, of mastery or a false sense of um, understanding potentially um, right. that you I lasted it pretty long for yeah for not in. moving at all <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's 101 though all right well I'll stop torturing myself I'm glad we actually got through the whole hour with this game I was kind of concerned but uh, thank uh, you Bittner or Bitter <laughs> um Binder. Binder. so thanks everybody for joining us um the ends in like an hour. The in an hour. Oh, nice. Uh, we got the cat's stuff. mustache tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And the arena. And the arena tomorrow. Um, the next week, I think we'll be playing Parallax, um, which is kind of a puzzle game. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for joining us. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.